Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Saturday's edition of the DCEU Daily. And first off, I have an Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom casting updates. I think there's three of them. Very exciting. Aquaman 2 casts Carshon, King, Atlan and more. Randall Park returning. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom cast actors to play Carshon, Carshon, King, Atlan and a new character with Randall Park also returning as Dr. Shin, which is awesome news because I love that character. This is by Cooper Hood of Screen Rant. The cast of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom grows after finding actors to play Carshin, King Atlan and others, as well as the confirmation that Randall Park is returning. Development on the sequel has been underway ever since Aquaman surpassed all expectations and made over one billion worldwide. James Wan's return to direct Aquaman 2 after finding time to make Malignant and the sequel will continue. Jason Momoa's time in the DC Extended Universe as Arthur Curry. Juan and Momoa have been busy filming Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom as of late, with each of them providing teases about the movie. This includes the debut of Aquaman's new stealth suit and the first look at old Patrick Wilson, who looks very different in the sequel. Details on Aquaman 2 have otherwise been rather tough to come by. It is unknown that that the supporting cast includes, it is known, shall I say, that the supporting cast includes Amber Heard returning as Mira, Yaya Abdul-Mateen II returns to play Black Manta too. There is also an ex expectation that William Dafoe, Volko, Dolph Lundgren, King Nera, Neras and Nicole Kidman Atlanta will be back. The latest update on Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom brings news of three new additions to the ensemble and the return of another familiar face. The new additions, according to THR, are Jenny Zoho, Saul, Saul, India Moore, Escape Room, Tournament of Champions, and Vincent Regan, Snow White and the Huntsman. Zoho plays Stingray, a new character created for Aquaman 2. Now this is interesting, an original character in a comic book movie which could go either way. Those characters either end up very popular or very unpopular. While Moore will portray Carson and Regan takes over the role of King Atlan. Very interesting. The report also states that Randall Park is returning as Dr. Stephen Shin after briefly appearing in Aquaman. Each of these new characters for Aquaman 2 could play intriguing roles in the sequel. Stingray is the toughest to place given she is an original creation for the movie, but it is possible she is aligned with Black Man to good point. Or the mysterious villain Game of Thrones, Pilu Ashbeck, is set to play. The addition of Moore as Karshon is also fascinating considering Karshon originated as a Green Lantern villain. Ooh, this is getting exciting, isn't it? Villain in the comics. Carson is a shark who gained intelligence and telepathy thanks to radiation and the character could appear in Aquaman 2 as part of the search for the Lost Kingdom. Meanwhile, King Atlan appeared in Aquaman with Grey McTavish portraying him. The decision to recast him with Regan could point to King Atlan having a bigger role in the sequel, possibly through flashbacks to show what happened to the, long, the, to the Lost Kingdom previously. Oh yes, oh yes please. It isn't terribly surprising that Park is returning as Dr. Stephen Shin in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Either his character was last seen working with Black Manta and hoping to find Atlantis by teaming up. Black Manta's return in the sequel always made Shin's appearance seem probable. What isn't clear is how big of a role Shin will play in the Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. But more information on his role and that of the new characters should come soon. Now that their involvement has been revealed, you expect a lot more information about these characters at DC Fandom. But I'm really excited about this, this movie because I think Aquaman wasn't as serviced as well in Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut as the other heroes were. He was great in it, but I don't think he was fleshed out as much as people like Cyborg and The Flash. Uh, you know, I mean, even Wonder Woman. Although I think Wonder Woman wasn't as fleshed out as, you know, Barry Allen and Cyborg were. And I think that's the thing. If you're doing a Justice League movie, they all should have their right. You know, they should all be fleshed out as much as each other. But anyway, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom sounds like a very exciting project to me and I can't wait to hear more about it at DC Fandome.
The Batman's Alfred actor confident the movie will be amazing. Exclusive, Andy Serkis, who will be played by who will play Alfred Pennyworth in Matt Reeves' upcoming The Batman movie, says he's sure the movie will be pretty amazing. By Saeed Fadula Hassani of Screen Rant. The Batman's Alfred Pennyworth actor Andy Serkis is sure that the movie will be amazing. Next in DCEU's lineup of upcoming movies, The Batman is perhaps the most hotly anticipated film of 2022. Originally, the movie was meant to serve as a solo vehicle for Ben Affleck after his turn as the Cape Crusader in Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. In fact, Affleck was even attached to direct and produce the movie, but in 2017, he exited the project, citing issues with defining his take on the story. Once Affleck had left, Cloverfield's Matt Reeves stepped in as the new director and he repurposed the film to tell a story set in the early crime-fighting years of Bruce Wayne's career. Twilight's Robert Pattinson was then cast as the hero, who will now battle a dangerous new threat in Gotham City. Although plot details on the Batman are thin, the film has still managed to gain quite some traction thanks to its starry ensemble cast, compromised of some of the most well-known characters from Batman comics lore. There is Paul Dano as the Riddler, who is presumably the film's main antagonist, while Zoe Kravitz is set to appear as Selina Kyle Catwoman, Colin Farrell has a comparatively smaller role as the DC villain Penguin, although Warner Brothers and DC Films have compensated for that by ordering him a solo spin-off series. How exciting is that? On HBO Max, as for Bruce Wayne's proponents, Jeffrey Wright will turn up as the Gotham City Police Department Commissioner, Jim Gordon, whereas the Lord of the Rings star Andy Serkis will play Alfred Pennyworth, Wayne's butler and mentor. But of course, Alfred in the comics is so much more than just the butler. Circus, who recently directed the Venom sequel, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, is quite confident about the success of the Reeves, the Batman movie. Recently, during an exclusive conversation with Screen Rant about his upcoming film, which opens in theatres on October the 1st, Circus talked about working with Reeves and Pattinson on the Batman. He admitted that he wasn't allowed to divulge many details, yet he went on to claim that he believes that Reeves' movie will be pretty amazing. He recalled his experience working with the director for the plan of the eighth movie suggesting that fans have something very special headed their way with the director's new feature read what he said below i've been totally forbidden to speak about the batman of course but what i will say is that i'm pretty certain matt reeves who is a very dear friend of mine and of course we've worked together on the planet of the eights movies i know for a fact he's making a pretty amazing picture i really think it's going to be special Although it's been a year since the first look at the movie was released during the 2020 DC fandom, the anticipation for the Batman remains reasonably high, more than reasonably high, people are stoked. Of course the movie has a brilliant cast, but besides that there are several things that fans are looking forward to. For one, the new film isn't just a conventional Batman movie, rather it's it's a thrilling psychological story that centers on the detective side of the character. Gotham City in the movie is also unlike all other Gothams, and the theme is composed by the maestro Michael, Michael Giacchino himself. All elements combined, there is very little that can prevent the Batman from being a runaway hit. Thus, one can say with confidence that Circus hopes for the movie aren't to miss. The second trailer for the Batman is just around the corner, as this year's DC fandom will also feature a new footage from the movie. Once the trailer is out, fans will be able to make more sense of Reeves' work. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> At the same time, getting an idea of what the movie will look like in theatres so far. All reactions to the Batman have been quite enthusiastic, although reports of a PG-13 rating have diminished the fever of some fans. Now, nah, I'm fine with it. Still, there is no reason to believe that the movie will be anything short of fantastic. This is something fans will get to know about more once the marketing campaign for the Batman kicks into higher gear, which will be in the new year, of course. Listen, the PG-13 rating isn't a problem at all. They couldn't make this another R-rated film. You know, James Gunn's film was R-rated. James Gunn's The Suicide Squad was R-rated. It hurt the box office ultimately. Yes, a Joker movie can, is, is, is one of the you know, most popular characters in fiction. People will come. And it was a great movie, so people kept on going again and again and re-watching it. That didn't happen with The Suicide Squad. You, you can't make... Look, you can make a special Batman Elseworld movie. 
kind of an R-rated movie, but they want to make money from this. They want to make an event out of this. So a PG-13 rating doesn't really stop you from making something a little bit dark and gritty. So it's great, absolutely great to hear the actor say that this is going to be a great piece of work. Very exciting. You know, the next DC live action project. I can't wait to see it. You can't wait to see it. And I can't wait to react to the trailer with you guys on October the 16th when DC Fandom launches. What a huge event. Exciting times if you're a true DC fan. Right, it's uh, take it with a pinch of salt time here on Saturday's edition of the DC EU Daily because one of my sources came to me yesterday. Very exciting news that Wonder Woman 3 will officially be announced at DC Fandom. We will get proper details about this movie. So, what are we going to find out? Who's directing it? Who's writing it? We obviously know Gal will star in it, where it's set. There will be more details about this movie. So, everyone expects Patty Jenkins to probably co-write and direct this movie. I don't know if Jeff Johns will be back as her partner in this. Listen, I... Look, just listen to my take, right? Zack Snyder created a cult classic in Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice and they kicked him off the property, right? Patty Jenkins made a really bad movie with so many plot holes, so many. An embarrassing film that tried to mock men and it's there in places as well as far as I'm concerned. Listen, the third act is beautiful. I like the third act, but the rest of the movie isn't fit for purpose. The way she brought back Steve Trevor, you know, she's obviously obsessed with Quantum Leap. Listen, the film simply didn't work as a whole movie because a third act, one act, one great act, doesn't make a great movie. This is what she attempted to get away with and now she's doing um, Rogue Squadron with Star Wars and I mean I don't know I don't think she's the director everybody thinks she is but why does everyone think she's a great director because of the first Wonder Woman Wonder Woman 2017 so it looks like other people were making her look good and when those people disappeared or she got rid of those people like Zack Snyder and Alan Heimberg the writer of the screenplay she didn't look so good did she so you know, that, that, that's, that, I think the best thing about the movie is Hans Zimmer's score. But I don't want her to come back and do another Wonder Woman movie. But this is Hollywood. We fail upwards in Hollywood. That's life. So it probably, it's probably, look, look, it's, right now it's looking like Patty Jenkins will co-write and direct Wonder Woman 3. But there's about 25% chance that she won't be. And I told you before how they can manage this without it looking like a controversial decision, you know, and bringing heat to the studio yet again. All she has to say is, you know, it's, it's a scheduling issue. She's too busy with Rogue Squadron. She thought she could handle both. She can't. So she has to focus on the film she's already started on. So she can't direct this film. And then they'll bring in somebody else. Then we ask the question if she is being replaced because, yes, she's talking at the moment like she's doing the film. But if they're playing it about a scheduling kind of situation, she's not going to say anything else but that she's still doing the movie. So let's kind of theorise here. Let's say she's not doing the movie. I think we need someone who can write and direct it. I think that's the kind of thing. But personally, what Alan Heinberg did with the screenplay in the first one, he deserves to come back. Personally... I would bring Alan Heimberg back and I'd get Zack Snyder to direct it. I think Zack's very busy with Rebel Moon and, you know, his zombie kind of franchises on Netflix as, Netflix as well. So that might not be possible. Personally, I think Snyder and Heimberg did a great job with the first movie. That's what I'm giving credit for. And what, but you could, there's so many different directors you could put in to a Wonder Woman movie to do a great job. And, you know, Anything's possible here. So there's a 75% chance that Patty Jenkins will be co-writing and directing Wonder Woman 3 because I, I, that's what they announced just after Wonder Woman 84. But there is a 25% chance, by the way, if I've got my maths right. <laughs> but yeah, there's a 25% chance that Patty won't be directing the next movie. If Patty doesn't direct Wonder Woman 3, I will be extremely happy about that because she proved with Wonder Woman 84 that 
she just doesn't have a clue about this character. She's adapting the Wonder Woman television series, and I'm simply not interested in that. I wasn't that interested in the Linda Carter series as a kid, let alone, you know, adapting it, thinking that's the origin material you should be looking at. That's insane. So I want Patty Jenkins out, and there are many great directors. There are great female directors. Could, you know, maybe give Michelle McLaren the chance she never got? You know, that would be great. Uh, but what could you do with a Wonder Woman 3? Hopefully we do get these big announcements at DC Fandom. I, I do say, as I've already said, pinch of salt. I don't know if it's definitely, definitely happening, but that's what my source has told me. So what would I do with Wonder Woman 3? There's a lot of interesting things you can do with Wonder Woman 3. You can kind of, um, kind of, I mean, what I think they're going to do is they're going to set it in the modern era, and I believe that Cavill and Affleck could be involved. But that's depending what happens to Cavill and Affleck after the Flash. But whoever the modern day Justice League characters are, they could involve them. This could be a real big crossover. This could be a Captain America Civil War movie for Wonder Woman. That's probably what they're going to do. Personally, I'd rather it be an actual Wonder Woman film. Now, there are also rumours that she will, which she will find and return to Themyscira, her home island, in Wonder Woman 3. So that's probably something else they will build upon in this movie. But you could also do something else. You could go back a couple of years after the first movie and then she could interact with all those wonderful supporting characters we all fell in love with from the first film. I mean, this is what should have happened with the sequel. But she was so toxically against what they did with the first film, she tried to get away from the first film as far as possible. Imagine that, one of the best comic book movies ever made, and this lunatic wanted to get as far away from it as possible. That's selfish and that's very toxic as far as I'm concerned. Or you could do something else. Again, you could set Wonder Woman free in the, in the modern era, but you could show the ancestors of those wonderful supporting characters in the first film and still play them by the same actors. Maybe that, that's something that wouldn't be very popular with you lot watching this and other fans. Ultimately, Wonder Woman is such a character of huge potential and there are limitless things you can do with this character. But what you don't do, the last thing you do, is what Patty Jenkins did with the character in Wonder Woman 84. I certainly was stunned. I was stunned and I was shocked by what I saw. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't the take of the film I saw in the test screening. That's why I was a lot more positive about it. Clearly there were issues and they weren't too sure what to do with this sequel. I think there was a fault from the studio about doing the Flashpoint scenario via the Wonder Woman 84 film. And I think they were trying to use the kind of Steve Trevor scenario to change the timeline. You know, Wonder Woman having to make a big decision. Do I leave him alive? Do I leave him dead? Which you kind of see in the film, but this would have affected the timeline. Clearly, it's better and it makes more sense if you're doing Flashpoint to do it with the Flash. And, and I think that's what they decided because it was originally going to be released in 2019. Um, then they delayed it to 2020, COVID hit, we finally saw it on Christmas of 2020, December 2020. And it ended up being like a Hallmark card, the film. Uh, you know, hugely disappointing, another disappointment for the DCEU, and you know, you just can't, you can't, you can't do that. You know, the first film was such a classic. I think the second film, and I think most second movies in a trilogy, should be dark. They should leave everything hanging. Lucas with The Empire Strikes Back had the right idea. Nolan with The Dark Knight had the right idea. But all she wants to do is tell inspirational stories. And don't get me wrong, I think you don't have any feelings or a soul if you're not inspired and you don't cry, you know, after that third act. It's very impactful and powerful. But it doesn't necessarily inspire you to go back and watch the whole film again. It didn't inspire me. I've seen the film, what, twice? I think I saw it the first time. I saw it the first time in cinemas, I think. And then I saw it the second time when I brought, brought it on 4K and I haven't seen it since. I probably will watch it again. And again, it's a DC movie. I'm very supportive to DC movies. But we all know that mistakes have been made. So... If we do get this announcement of Wonder Woman 3 at Fandome, 
it will be very interesting what they say about it. And what, if Patty Jenkins is involved with Wonder Woman 3, you won't see anything happening because she's still got to do Cleopatra as well, apparently. So you're looking at probably, I mean, she's going to be working with Rogue Squadron next year as well. Uh, she'll probably do uh, she'll probably do the other movie next year as well. So you probably won't hear anything about Wonder Woman 3. She won't go into production until 2023. So it's, it's going to be a long wait, but we should get more details about that film, hopefully, um, at DC Fandom. But then again, because if she's involved, the start date is going to be longer, we may not hear anything. But if it is a brand new director and they're going to, you know, they're pushing that film a bit more forward in development, then we could have a very, very exciting announcement at DC Fandom. Because Wonder Woman is extremely important. She really is. She's... You know, she's one of the top three superheroes, you know, in DC Comics alongside Batman and Superman. So we want to see her third movie. But also, I don't want this nonsense about Gal Gadot only doing three movies. Now, if she wants to step away from it, they can recast the situation. And that will be interesting as well. I don't think only Gal Gadot can play Wonder Woman. These DC characters can be played by, you know, a variety of great actors, especially now with the multiverse strategy. But yeah, it will be very interesting to find out what they're planning. The problem is with sticking with Patty Jenkins because of Wonder Woman 84, any announcements they make won't create the hype that they want them to create. This is the problem. Nobody's fault, right? Now, it, at DC Fandom, if she does announce that, you know, they're going to, you know, Wonder Woman will stand with Batfleck and Cavill Superman in Wonder Woman 3, people will be very hyped and very excited and that will be a great movie. Because I think Wonder Woman needs that now. Wonder Woman didn't need other superheroes after the first movie. Everyone loved the film. One of, as I always say, one of the best comic book movies of all time. But the damage done by Wonder Woman 84 was so severe and so deep. I, I think they need Cavill and Affleck to, you know, to bail the character out of it. And that's a shame. That's, you know, in the progressive times that we live in, you know, she shouldn't need Batman and Superman, but she does. Now, she was asked if, you know, if we'd see any Justice League characters in Wonder Woman 3, and she said, only if it serves the story. And so, I think we may get a big Fimiscaria story, and something goes wrong, maybe. Apparently, her mother's going to die or something, and I think that was the plan for Wonder Woman, uh, so for Justice League 2 or 3, wasn't it? Zack was going to implement that. So maybe they're going to begin to implement Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3 stories within DCEU movies. That's the rumour. I think they're doing that with The Flash and other movies as well. So they're still using some of Snyder's story beats because they're not all his story beats because some of them are Jim Lee's story beats and Jeff John's story beats. So they can still use them. You know, they, Snyder doesn't own them. So that's interesting as well. So, yeah, I believe that Wonder Woman 3 will be a Fimiscaria story. She goes back. She's going to become the queen. But then something happens and maybe she needs Superman's and Batman's help and support. If it's that type of movie, I think it will be great. We need to keep away from the commentary. The commentary they tried to do in Wonder Woman 84 simply didn't work. Obviously, that moment when Steve Trevor vanishes and then she can fly... Was it a female empowerment moment? I don't need no man. Uh, but they didn't really, they didn't blatantly say that. But I love that moment when she runs and she flies. It's one of the best moments in the movie. It's great. You know, this movie isn't without its great moments. But when you look at Cheetah and the eyeliner that just looks like, you know, girl makeup, it's terrible. This is supposed to be Patty Jenkins, one of the great directors. And clearly, she's not one of the great directors because she made a mess of this movie. The evidence is there. Now, personally, I wouldn't green light another Wonder Woman movie with Patty Jenkins. Because all you have to do to see what I'm talking about is go and watch the movie. And it simply wasn't at a good level. At least Justice League had excuses for being so bad because of the schedule. Because they weren't able to use Cav Cavill properly. There, there were reasons for what happened with Justice League. There was no reason for the bad stuff that happened with Wonder Woman 84 and Patty Jenkins. That all stems from her. And clearly, she doesn't have what it takes to make these movies. And I'm stunned. And you know, 
And this shows you there are still issues with WB and DC and allowing her to make another movie because it's clear she doesn't have the ability. If you're Kathleen Kennedy and uh, Lucasfilm, you must be very worried right now, but they can't back away from it. It's a big statement. You know, a famous female director, you can't remove her. Not when you're talking about being progressive and the force being female and nonsense like that, right? It, there's no getting away from it. But at the end of the day, we were, look, we were all shocked by Wonder Woman 84. We, we all thought we were going to get a better movie than we finally did. It simply didn't work. And, you know, you can like it. It's up to you. I can't tell you what to like or not. But for me, the film wasn't fit for purpose. You know, you've got a character like Maxwell Lord. Take what he's out of the comics. Make him superb. Now, he's an interesting villain, and he's a villain of circumstance, but ultimately... He, he was literally Donald Trump in this movie, and that's a shame. And we were just fed another stupid moral lesson by Hollywood, telling us not to be greedy when they're the richest, most greediest people in the fucking world. So, you know, they're the ones at award ceremonies that move the homeless people away, right? And they talk about compassion and kindness. How dare you lecture us? And so I am not happy that Patty Jenkins is probably going to direct Wonder Woman 3, but maybe she can turn it around. But you know, this is DC Comics. We should have the best directors for our movies. Zack Snyder is one of the best directors for these type of films. He's already proven it. I mean, I mean if Zack Snyder was announced to direct Wonder Woman 3, I think this would be brilliant. Finally, the studio and the director can just make peace. And who knows what that would mean for restoring the Snyderverse as well. Look. The man made a brilliant first Wonder Woman movie. Yes, I'm saying it. I'm calling it that way. And the way he introduced Wonder Woman in Batman vs Superman was sensational. There is no doubt, there is no question that this director understands Wonder Woman. It would be absolutely brilliant and actually quite progressive. And actually, I would start to believe that Warner Brothers and DC finally get what it takes to make a great comic book franchise if they replace Patty Jenkins, especially with Zack Snyder, or any director. I don't think she's the right director. She's proven it with Wonder Woman 84. There are so many epic things you should do, and taking away the sword and the shield from Wonder Woman is like taking away Superman's cape. You wouldn't do it, even though the physical impractic you know, impracticalities of wearing a, a cape, nobody gives a shit about that, right? And nobody gives a shit that you want Wonder Woman to be compassionate and kind. She can still be compassionate and kind, Patty, with, with a sword and a shield. That's who she is. She can be a brutal warrior, but it doesn't mean she still isn't a compassionate and kind person. Sometimes she has no-win scenarios and she has to kill people. She doesn't kill out of pleasure. She kills out of necessity. That's the difference. And people like Patty Jenkins don't get it. And this is the problem with extreme left Hollywood, because when you've got a bunch of politicians making films, she probably took away the sword and the shield, and she probably kind of connected it to, you know, not having, you know, guns at, in, at home, right? And things like that, because this is how crazy these people are. The sword and the shield is an important piece of Wonder Woman. And when you take that away, you get the audience to think, what are you doing here? Oh, I can't even remember. I don't think she had a sword and a shield in the TV series. Again, Patty being obsessed with the TV series is disappointing because the TV series isn't great Wonder Woman. Most of us who watched it were lads who wanted to watch Linda Carter running around looking hot. I'm sorry to be so blatant and disrespectful and disingenuous, but it's the truth. That's why we watched that fucking show. It wasn't a great interpretation of Wonder Woman. We all know that let's stop pretending. So I wish upon wishes that Patty Jenkins wouldn't direct Wonder Woman 3, but it looks like she will, and that's a shame. We should know more about it, as I say, at DC Fandom, but Wonder Woman 3 is something they cannot get wrong, because if these 2022 movies hit good, we don't want to see another dud in Wonder Woman. She's such an important character. This is why I think they should just get a new director, and it's somewhat disappointing if they do use Patty Jenkins, but if they replace her, look out for what I said. 
that they will actually say that it was a scheduling problem and they're not removing her because they weren't happy with the second movie because they're never going to be honest about that now. But we will wait and see and I will keep you apprised of the Wonder Woman 3 situation as more news approaches us. This has been the DCEU Daily. I'm Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives and I will be back in tomorrow's DCEU Daily. Until then, peace. Goodbye. See you later. Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss this perfection. Maybe I'll wear my pink shirt tomorrow. You wouldn't want to miss that now, would you? Until then, goodbye.